Hey guys, it's Elena. Welcome back to my channel. So again, if you know me and you've seen any of my latest videos, I have a thing for gingham. I like it. And recently I was on Instagram and Pinterest and I saw this super cute dress everywhere and I just knew that I had to have it. So I decided to make it <laughs> and I'm going to walk you through all the steps that I went through to recreate my own version of this dress so that you can do something just like it. So this is everything that you will need for this project. I started off by buying two yards of blue gingham, one and a half yards of pink gingham, and one yard of yellow gingham. And once I washed and dried all of that, I went ahead and moved on to draping for my dress for the bodice piece. I used a piece of old bed sheet from a previous project that I wasn't using for anything. And I just pinned it at my shoulder and at my waist. And I was going off of this picture from the original dress that I'm trying to recreate. And I'm just trying to get that same shape with the V-neck and then trying to do the three pleats. So I was able to do it pretty good, I think. And then the next step was to drape to try to get that actual like waistband piece that was kind of that triangle piece. So I pinned it on and then I'm just cutting to have it fit all the way around me. And I used this as a good mock-up to actually cut my pink gingham. Once I finished draping, I started cutting out all of my pieces from my actual fabric. So I cut out four pocket pieces and then I moved on to the skirt pieces. I cut out one large rectangle for the front of my skirt and then two smaller rectangles for the back. And then I used the piece that I draped with to cut out my front waistband and I did make sure to add a little bit of extra fabric all the way around for seam allowance and then I am cutting out a little bit extra fabric for the sleeves so that they can be a little bit more puffy and then I'm cutting out some back pieces and then using my draped pieces to cut out what I need for the front and this is everything that I ended up with to be able to make my fully lined bodice dress. Okay, so I just finished cutting everything out. I have all my pieces and now I'm going to move on to my skirt. I'm gonna put on the pockets and then sew up the sides and then gather the top and then the bulk of the skirt will be done. So let's go do that.
Okay, I did it. I added the pockets onto the skirt. I gathered it so the skirt is like ready to be attached. So now I just have to do the bodice. <laughs> so I'm gonna start on the back. I think I'm going to add darts to the back and I'm doing a lined bodice. So I'm gonna do it four times one on the left side, one on the right side, and then all over again, because it's gonna be lined. So, I'm gonna go put the darts in, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So the pattern piece for the back that I decided to use didn't have a darts in it, so I just went ahead and made my own. I figured out how much I needed to bring it in. It ended up being about an inch and a half, so I'm just marking about halfway from where I want the dart to start and end. I'm measuring up about six or seven inches and then I'm basically just connecting the dots, pinching that fabric together, and then start pinning it together to connect everything. And you can draw a straight line to help you do that, but you'll basically just make a triangle shape and then just start sewing at the bulk bottom of the dart and then sew straight off until you're completely off of your panel piece. Okay, so I finished the darts in the back. I think that they look pretty good. The, I feel like the stripes are lined up for the most part, so I'm really happy with how these turned out. So the next task is to move on to the front. So originally what I did is I took this old bed sheet that I found from the thrift store and I basically draped it on myself to get the shape that I want. I have a mannequin, but it's old, it's vintage, and it doesn't really fit me anymore it's like too small so i just draped it on myself i kind of like pinned it to my clothes and then pleated it where i wanted it to and this is what it looks like <laughs> i got a pen to mark where i pleated it and so this is what i'm going off of i'm a little bit nervous about this but it's all trial and error right it'll look good in the end so i'm gonna take this and take the front pieces that I cut out and start trying to get these pleats in and we'll go from there. <laughs> So my goal is to transfer the pleats that I marked on my draped piece onto my actual gingham piece. So I'm first just accounting for how much I want my seam allowance to be, and then I just start measuring how wide I want my pleats to be. So each pleat is about an inch and a half. So I measure out an inch and a half, and then I measure out an inch. So I'm moving that first piece to the inch, and then I just keep doing that a few more times until I have three pleats in total. They all are about the same width and they all kind of curve up a little bit. And I also am just trimming off some of the excess fabric and you can see that it really does fit me very nicely and I'm really happy with how the shape is looking. Okay, I did it. Wrong one. <laughs> okay, I did it. I made three little pleats on the front pieces. I think it looks good. I think so. So I'm going to baste the front pieces with the back pieces at the shoulders and the side seams so I can check the fit 
and make any needed adjustments. And then I'll do it for realsies. And then the bodice is like, like halfway done. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, so I took some time and I basted my bodice pieces together and I adjusted the fit a little bit. So I trimmed some fabric off the shoulder and also trimmed some fabric on the side. So I think I'm really happy with it now. So the next steps is to put my left bodice front to my left bodice back at the shoulder seams and the side seams and then do the same thing for the right side and then do all of that all over again because I have a lining and an outer piece. So I'm gonna do everything basically four times. And then after I have the lining pieces and the outside pieces, I'm going to put them together along the neck shoulder pieces and then put them right sides out so that I'm ready to go to attach it to the waistband. So let's go do that. Okay, so I finished the pink part of the bodice. So I have the lining and the outer shell together now. I think it looks pretty good. So the next step is to put on the sleeves and the waistband. So I'm gonna do the sleeves next. I made these so that they should be puffy. Um, so the top is like very flat. <laughs> so I'm gonna gather this up at the top and then sew the arm seams together and then stick them on my bodice and then add some elastic so they can keep puffy. I'm excited. So yeah, sleeves are next and uh, let's get to it. So to make my sleeves puffy, I am doing a long basting stitch along the top shoulder of each of my sleeves and then I'm just pulling on those strings to get a nice gathered puff at the top and then I'm folding those in half and then sewing along that side seam. Once the sleeves are ready to be inserted, I am lining up the side seam of my bodice to the side seam of my sleeve and nesting those so that they're all nice and straight and lined up. And then I'm just easing that gathering stitch any amount that I need for the sleeve to fit in there nice and snug. I'm pinning it and then I am just sewing all around and serging it. Once I have done that, I will just do a double folded hem to finish off that raw edge of my sleeve. So I folded mine down about a half an inch twice 
and then I'm just securing that with a nice straight stitch. And once I've done that, I want to add elastic to my sleeve so that it makes it really nice and extra puffy. So I cut a piece of elastic that fits my arm nice and snug, but not too tight. I secure it so it's a circle, and then I'm just pinning it so that it is straight to my hem, and I am attaching it straight onto my sleeve with a zigzag stitch. I think that this makes it look really nice, but it's a really easy way to make your sleeve puffy. Okay, so I have finished the sleeves. They are indeed puffy, so I like how these turned out. And the next step is to put on the waistband. So the waistband is at a triangle and I am going to figure out the placement for this and then basically sandwich these two waistbands between the bodice fabric. So let's go into that. So I am starting with the front of my waistband and I'm lining up the center triangle point to the left corner of my first bodice piece and then just pinning along the raw edge of the bodice and then doing the same thing on the other side of my bodice piece so that both bodice pieces are connected through the waistband. Make sure that before you actually go to sew it, maybe do a basting stitch or just pin it really nice and securely so that you like the shape and you make sure that everything is nice and symmetrical. Once you feel really good about it, then you can go ahead and sew it together and then sew the other side of your waistband on the other side so that the pink is sandwiched in between both of the yellow waistbands. And that way your raw edges will be totally, completely enclosed. So that takes care of the front of our waistband, but to do the back waistband, we're just going to sew together the waistband pieces at the side seams, making sure that it's lining up with the side seams of our bodice and so that everything is nice and straight. And then we can continue to sandwich the pink bodice piece in between the yellow waistband pieces. Okay, so I put the waistband on the bodice and the next step is to put on the skirt. I am going to sandwich the skirt in between the waistband pieces and uh, after that I'm going to hem it, put in the zipper, and then we're basically done. So we are going to do something very similar with the skirt, but we are first going to start by lining up the side seams of our skirt to the side seams of our waistband, and then just distributing the fabric and the gather all the way around so that it is all nice and lined up. I go to secure that with pins, and then I will go and do my normal straight stitch all the way along. And then once I really like the fit of everything, I will do the same exact thing with my other yellow piece, but this time I will just fold over about a half inch and fold it over that raw edge so that the raw edge is totally enclosed. I will do all my pinning on the right side of my dress so that I can do a quick stitch in the ditch to make sure that everything is secured on both sides but again so that all of my raw edges will be enclosed. 
Once the waistband is done and all of my raw edges have been surged, I am just moving on to put in my zipper. I really like doing invisible zippers. I feel like they look really nice and professional. So I have a video all about how to install those if you need more information, but it was really important to me to make sure that my waistband is totally lined up on both sides. And I also made a big effort to make sure that the stripes of my gingham were also lined up. I think that just adds a level of technical professionalism to your projects and they just make it look really nice. So once I have done my zipper, the very last step is just to hem the very bottom of my skirt, which I just did a double folded hem like normal. I really think that those look nice. And once I did that, the whole dress was done. I really like how it turned out. I think it fits me very well. It's such a flattering shape. And I really feel like it's true to the actual Tilda dress. And I think it's a really great recreation. I hope you guys loved this tutorial and me walking you through how I did it. And I hope to see you next time.